let us continue and we want to compare this average oxidation number versus actual oxidation number which is pretty interesting so let's talk about it now if you're given let's say this guy uh, s 406 2 minus then i tell you okay you're going to find the oxidation state of sulfur can we do that no problem very simple because we again fix oxidation state of oxygen oxygen usually is a minus two so if it is a minus two then six of them will be a minus 12 all right so overall charge is a minus two so therefore the total charges of my four of my sulfur will be a plus 10 divided by four so oxidation state for sulfur will be a 2.5 2.5 no problem so if i do my calculation this is the value that we will be that we will be getting but maybe previously when we look at 2.5 then okay now whatever value that we calculate uh, so that will be the oxidation number because we don't really know what do we mean by oxidation state we don't really uh, try to define oxidation state uh, at secondary level but now when we talked about oxidation state uh, which is the charge that a species will acquire if it is an ion or if it is a hypothetical ion then you realize that hey, it's not possible for the charge to be a plus 2.5 because how can you transfer half an electron? How can you transfer a 0.5 electron? It's not possible. So you notice uh, there's a bit of an issue involving this guy here. If I have an oxidation state of plus 2.5, but it is not possible for me to transfer half an electron. So therefore, it is not possible for your sulfur to have a charge of plus 2.5. It doesn't make sense, correct? So what is the discrepancy? Where is the, what is the issue with that? Where is this discrepancy? Actually, what we are doing here is we are calculating the average oxidation state, but the actual oxidation state of sulfur is actually not 2.5. So meaning out of the four sulfur inside here, the oxidation state for my sulfur actually is not 2.5. Some of it may be higher than that. Some of it will be lower than that. But when we average it, ah, this will be 2.5. So I think it is a good idea to try to talk about it based on the structure of s 406 2 minus. Of course, the structure of s 406 2 minus were not required to memorize it. So let me just draw you the structure and then we talk about it along the way, okay? So the structure for my s 406 2 minus, s 406 2 minus looks something like this. I have four sulfur, huh? all joined together. Sulfur, bonded to sulfur, bonded to sulfur, bonded to sulfur. We're not re required to memorize this. Huh? This is just an example. So we draw you this guy. And then based on the structure, oh, we figure out the oxidation state. Then I have six oxygen. One of it is a double bond O. I have a double bond O here. Single bond O. This oxygen is actually a minus charge. So let me put a minus charge here. The other sulfur is exactly the same. Mirror image, double bond O, double bond O, single bond O minus. So this is my S4062 minus. All right. Hopefully, we can recognize that, hey, this is symmetrical. So later, I just need to talk about these two sulfur. Then it will be the same for the second half of it. Now, let us consider the same concept or the same technique that we have talked about previously. If I consider the difference in electronegativity, and when I break this bond, then where would the electron go to? Who will take the positive charge? And who will take the negative charge? Correct? So let us try to consider that. Now, SO bond, the first one. Oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur, so the electron pair is closer to O than to S. And therefore, if I were to break this bond, oxygen will gain a minus charge, sulfur will gain a plus charge. So this will be a minus, then this will be a plus. And based on this, I can actually figure out oxidation state of this oxygen. I have a minus one from this bond. I have a minus charge from this electron already. Total charge acquired by this oxygen will be a minus two. So therefore, that will be the oxidation state for this oxygen, minus 2. Again, no surprises. Huh? Oxidation state of, of oxygen is always a minus 2, unless it is bonded to fluorine, unless it is a peroxide. So it's fairly standard. But you notice now we can deduce. It's not just memorize, no meaning to it, or you don't need to understand, just need to memorize. Of course, we are able to do a little bit of understanding. We will still fall back on memorizing most of the time, but we can deduce the actual oxidation state for this guy. We want to be able to appreciate that, okay? Now, how about this uh, sulfur double bond oxygen? Now, if it is a single bond, then there are two electrons. If it is a double bond, then there are four electrons, correct? Sulfur will contribute two electrons. Oxygen will contribute two electrons. So the position of the electrons, again, is closer to oxygen than to sulfur. 
because oxygen is more electronegative, right? So dot cross, dot cross. So I draw something like this, all closer to oxygen. So if I were to break this bond, chop this bond, all the electron will go to oxygen. So oxygen will gain two electrons, charge acquired by this guy will be a minus two. Sulfur will lose two electrons, plus two for sulfur. Again, if you consider oxidation state for my oxygen, uh, gain two electrons. Oxidation state for this oxygen is still a minus two. No surprises here. So once we are okay with this S double bond O, break this bond plus two minus two, this S double bond O is exactly the same. If you were to break this bond, oxygen is a minus two, sulfur will be a plus two. Okay? So we have one more bond with respect to sulfur, sulfur-sulfur bond. Remember sulfur-sulfur bond, there's no difference in electronegativity. So the electron pair is sitting exactly at the center. So if I were to break this bond, maybe let me just put this in. Huh? The electron pair is sitting exactly at the center. If I were to break this bond, this is the equal breaking of your bond. There's no charge acquired when you break your sulfur-sulfur bond. So the charge acquired will be zero, zero. Basically no charge acquired. So what we can do now, is I can determine oxidation state for this sulfur that is bonded to all this oxygen, right? So total charge acquired by this champion here is what? It is plus one charge, plus two charge, plus two charge, then plus zero charge. Total charge acquired by this guy is a plus five. So therefore, that will be the oxidation state of this sulfur, plus five. Oxidation state, this guy here is also a plus five because it's a mirror image, okay? Now, how about this sulfur? This sulfur, I already break one sulfur-sulfur bond, zero, zero. I have another sulfur-sulfur bond to consider, but the story is exactly the same. Same element, no difference in electronegativity. Electron pair is sitting exactly at the center. So if I were to break this bond, then the charge acquired will be zero, zero, correct? So this is zero, this is zero. So if I consider this sulfur, what is the charge for this guy? If I try to make it into an ion, actually this guy is a zero and zero charge acquired by this guy is zero charge, no charge acquired. So therefore, that is the oxidation state for this sulfur. Oxidation state for this sulfur is zero. This guy, which is the mirror image of this champion here, is also zero. So these are the actual oxidation state of sulfur. Actual oxidation state of this sulfur is a plus five. This guy is zero. This guy is zero. This guy is a plus five. All right. So hopefully we can tell that or we can appreciate that the average oxidation state and actual oxidation state, they're actually different things, obviously. Yeah? And if I have determined the actual oxidation state for all these guys, I can easily work out the average, correct? So once I have individual oxidation number, everything add up, this will be 5 plus 0 plus 0 plus 5. Then this one, of course, will be equals to plus 10. Uh, then divided by the number of your sulfur, divided by 4, this will give me plus 2.5. So it will give me the average oxidation state, which is what we have calculated previously. So what we are trying to say here is average oxidation state works reasonably well. Most of the time, we will still be using that. But do keep in mind in terms of concept, it doesn't make sense for an element to have a plus 2.5 oxidation state because by definition, oxidation state is referring to the charge that this guy will acquire if it becomes an ion. So we are able to determine the actual oxidation state. This technique eventually we will need to make use of it. Eh? So do keep this in mind.